<sighs> well, that's what my engine looks like right now. And if you're watching this video, you're probably curious about my endeavors going through a PCV replacement. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Basically, my PCV was blown. I was burning oil like crazy. Got the check engine light for a bad PCV. Um, hopefully this fixes my oil consumption uh, issue. You've probably seen the oil consumption video I made where I thought it might've been the uh, piston rings. And then as soon as I cut that video, it's like the car new. Two days later, I got the check engine light for the bad PCV, which my PCV that I replaced, it was only two years old. I had just done it. So kind of sucks I have to do it this fast, but here we are. Um, this is not a DIY video because FCP Euro already has a great DIY video on how to remove your supercharger and how to replace the PCV along with water pump thermostat, pretty much all the internal components here that you would want to do. I'm not doing thermostat or water pump just because they're only two years old and no signs of uh, failure, but, um, this is kind of uh, something that's like an addendum to their DIY video because they are missing a few things. They don't go into detail as to what gaskets and seals you're gonna need, uh, some things to look out for when you're tearing all this stuff apart, some of the things that I found that you need to be careful with. So that's why I'm making this video. Uh, so the first thing that you need to be careful of, this coolant pipe right here. Uh, when you go to buy your parts, I would suggest definitely buying a replacement coolant pipe. And just so you guys know, all the parts that I'm going to suggest you buy will be in the description of the video once I get this up. Um, this is the coolant pipe that lays right here across the valley. It connects in the back to a hose I'll show you in a little bit. And then this goes into your thermostat and it sits in there. And this is in there tight. Um, you can see there's an O-ring here and this fitting goes in there. The thing about this one, when it's in there, there's not a lot of room to play. And the reason you want to buy one of these is because in order to get this out, you got to apply a lot of force. And let me find my pipe that I actually removed over here. You can actually see on this thing, let me get over here. You can see little bite marks from the pliers that I grabbed. Basically it sits in there and I grab a pliers and it kind of sits like this and I would wrenched it over and you kind of want to do this and push it back. You've got some uh, room, like you got some little electrical connectors. Let me zoom in. Those right there that you got to push back to get to a T30. And then you can make some room where you can get back there. Now, let me show you exactly where this connects in the back. But first, in order to do that, I need my flashlight. So if we go over here, let me move some of the stuff out of the way. You can see right there that opening where the coolant's dripping out of, that is where the back of that coolant pipe plugs into. Now, what you can't see on there because it decided to go bye-bye is a retaining clip that clips in from the bottom. I can show you what it looks like because I just got a brand new one from Audi. This is what it looks like right here. That clip is in there on the bottom and you have to pull it down to release this end of the coolant pipe here so it can be removed. It was not easy. It was not as simple as just pulling it down and then pulling the pipe out and pushing that back. I had to get a long screwdriver in there and push as hard as I could, push that pipe back. And when I did that, the retaining clip just completely disappeared into the valley of the back of the engine. It's probably sitting in my subframe somewhere. So when you do that, I would suggest just pulling that clip out completely so that you don't lose it like I did and setting it somewhere safe. That way, when you go to reinstall the new one, you can uh, just put it back on there. It's only a $2 clip, but mine, I lost. So there was that. The other issue, right here, this is where the injector, uh, the, the fuel injectors sit normally. In every DIY I've seen, when people pull off the intake manifold flapper uh, area here, like the passenger side of this, the injectors have come out, or I'm sorry, the injectors have stayed in the engine when they come out. And so typically most people just buy the replacement uh, seals and gasket kit for that, which those look like this right here. It just comes with the uh, gaskets that you can see from the top of the injector. And of course on my car, when I pulled it out, the injectors came out with the actual manifold and I've already got them all out here. So with that happened, these retaining clips on the bottom, if those come out, they need to be replaced. They're, they suggest that you replace them because they're plastic, they're brittle. You can even see some, some buildup in there. If I can get it to focus real quick, focus. There we go. You can kind of see some buildup on there. Um, and even one of them was completely broken. 
So since I only got the seal kit, I didn't have those. So I had to wait a couple days to order those. And that's why I didn't get put back on the weekend. So here are brand new retaining clips. And I just went ahead and got the brand new injector uh, retainers that attach up here. They are, they recommend you use them. I don't know why. I don't think I need to, uh, or they recommend you replace them. I don't think I really need to, but they're only a couple dollars a piece. So I was like, screw it. They're out. I'm going to do it. So um, I get to rebuild my injectors, which is very simple. It's just taking up a, or taking a couple gaskets off and some new ones on. Um, so when you do this job, I would suggest you get all of these, uh, FCP sells the top seal kit, but they don't sell these parts. I actually sent them an email and asked them, Hey, you guys should add this to that kit because people could potentially need those. You can get these on, uh, ECS tuning. They actually sell the full kit on ECS tuning, or you can go to your Audi dealership. They're not very expensive. I think they're either seven or $10 a piece for the retaining clips and a few dollars for these. So I would have all of those on hand to do this. Um, I'm going to start putting this thing back together. And as I come across other things that I think you should be aware of, I'll record it and talk to you about it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And like I said, I'll also have a link to the FCP Euro DIY video. There's no use in me making a full DIY video because theirs is fantastic. Um, and this is just something to go along with it that will help you fill in the uh, small areas of missing information that you might have for doing this job. The other thing that I've done is I've completely disassembled my supercharger and I'm glad I did because these were completely just caked up and I'm gonna have an entire video on disassembling the supercharger, pulling out your intercooler cores, inspecting them, cleaning them, and also talking about what gaskets and seals to replace on this as well. That'll be a separate video. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back into this. Okay guys, something else to mention. <clears throat> um, when you're trying to get this this coolant pipe out here, which it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it's located back here and it connects into the engine block right there. You can see that that's the weird T30 you have to remove. Now this flange here, that metal thing doesn't sit like that normally. It's not normally just all completely bent back out of that way. Um, when I removed it, in order to get enough room to maneuver this pipe out of there, I had to bend that backwards. So <clears throat> um, when you go to install this, that's got to get bent back forwards and then tighten the screw on there. And uh, <clears throat> that'll bring it back to the front. These little clips here, these green clips here, there's a green, there's a red one. Those literally just slide in and out of this channel. That metal thing has a channel that they slide into. Um, you can slide them back and forth. Like, I'm just going to get this one to slide a little bit. Yeah, you can see it push back there. So that just slides there out the back and you can slide it back in. That red one slides in there too. I slid them both back so I had room to get my T30 in there. And the tool you want to do that with is something like this, a little mini bit driver. Um, something really shallow that you can get in there and put a T30 on to get it screwed in and screwed out or unscrewed. Uh, so I'm gonna tighten all that stuff back up now. Um, definitely don't lose that retaining clip on the back of this coolant pipe. Um, it goes in there and it sits in there really solid. Like it doesn't just slide in and slide out. It gets in there and it's stuck in there. I accidentally lost the second retaining clip that I got. Um, I just could not get my hands in there to put it back on. I kept trying, 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 and then it fell and it's now, having fun with the other retaining clip that I lost. So I don't think I'm gonna have any leaking issues. It's in there super tight. Um, I've tried to remove this pipe uh, to get back there and look again, but uh, it didn't come out. So I'm just saying, screw it. I put it back in. Hopefully I won't have any issues with any kind of coolant leaks. I don't think I will uh, because it's a tight seal back there, uh, but got that in there. Um, got my injectors back in, they're all plugged up. So I'm gonna start piecing all this stuff back together. Okay guys, when you are getting that screw back in, that T30 that's at the back there that's really hard to access. Um, I would suggest take off any gloves you have, use your regular hands so you have the most tactile feel grip on this thing. And you want to get that started by hand and thread it in as much as you can by hand so you don't risk having it fall out and fall into the abyss to go join those other two retaining clips down in the bottom uh, or the back of the engine. Um, if you lose that, it's not good because you don't want this thing moving around with the engine moving. So <clears throat> get it in there, thread it by hand as much as you can. It's a really tight fit. And then use your uh, ratcheting, your, your mini ratchet or whatever system you got to uh, get in there and tighten it all the way back up. All right, guys, another one, <clears throat> another quick tip. When you are removing that Y pipe, which is off the back of your PCV, this one here, when you are, you, there's a little, I think it's a T20 or T25, you unscrew, and then you back that out. You just gently use a screwdriver to slowly pry it out without damaging it. <clears throat> uh, it comes out 
what I would suggest doing is going over here to the valve cover and removing the other part of this vacuum line. Um, this will give you a lot more room for this. Sorry, I'm using my mic as a pointer. If you remove this vacuum line, <clears throat> this will give you a lot more room for this thing to be able to push out and maneuver. You'll be able to lift it up, move it around just a little bit further, and that's gonna really help your ability to get back in here to mess with the T30 and those other things. So uh, it doesn't really take much to pop this out. Go ahead and do it, and uh, that'll give you a little bit more room. Another fun tidbit of information. Um, once you get your fuel lines connected and everything put back in, you're supposed to torque it all down and then open up your car door so that you prime the fuel pump and get fuel going through here and you check for leaks. Um, well, I did that and I had no leaks here, but then all of a sudden coolant started pouring out somewhere. Uh, this is These are your two hoses that go back and connect to your uh, supercharger. And, you know, I drained the coolant out of the system, but there's always going to be some coolant left in there. I also have the CWA100 uh, coolant pump, and I've done the pump mod. Basically, I have it on to where it's running 100% of the time. And as soon as I unlocked the door, it turned that fuel pump on. And once it did, coolant started pouring out of this uh, hose right here and going to the bottom. You can see I got coolant all in there. So, um, yeah, that was cool. I tried to shove a rag in here, and it went for probably about two minutes before it shut off after closing my door and trying to lock it. So just be aware of that. Um, you've got to do this to make sure you have no fuel leaks. You can't just put it all back together and then just wish it well, because if you have fuel leaks, it's a massive fire hazard. So just be prepared for that. So I was almost right to the point of putting my supercharger back on and I was getting these gaskets on and I noticed something. So this is something they kind of gloss over when you're doing the FCP Euro DIY video. When you put the flapper manifolds back on, it's got a flapper housing. If you look right in here, you can see when you press down, all the flaps open and that's what it's supposed to do, okay? Then they get stuck, they get caught by that little shiny lip that you kind of see. So when you put these on, you're supposed to press the flaps down and push them and press them all the way down and then you can let go and tighten it all down. Well, I thought I did that, but as I'm doing this, I realized, you know, that one's good, this one's good. Wait a minute, that one's not. This one is sitting on top of the valve. So I'm gonna have to, I mean, I just got everything back together. I'm gonna try, I've unbolted this. I'm going to try my best to just lift it up slightly to be able to put that back in, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to take everything apart again. So make sure that flapper is down below there whenever you put that flapper manifold back on so you don't have to deal with this because I've already primed the fuel. I've literally gotten everything back together and ready to put the supercharger back on. So this is kind of a bummer, but at least I caught it before I filled the car up with coolant because it will throw a check engine light and you'll have to disassemble everything all over again to fix it. All right, guys, I'm about to wrap up uh, putting my engine back together from replacing my PCV. All I have to do is put my intake back on. I just finished bleeding the entire system. If uh, you don't know how to do that and you need to do a full manual bleed, which, by the way, guys, even if you have a vacuum tool and you use it, I highly suggest you manually bleed after with ERDS just because there's so many places in this engine that air can get trapped. Uh, you start with the heat exchanger. You move to the heater core in the back. Then after that's done, you move to the passenger side, bleeder valve on the supercharger, and then the driver side. Make sure you get all that air out. Also, something that makes this incredibly easy, which I didn't have when I made my video, is that thing right there. That just sits there. It's not a perfect seal into the uh, reservoir, but it's good enough for what we're doing and allows you to keep that coolant uh, higher than the rest of the engine, which is what forces coolant through the entire system to push all that air out. The other cool thing about it, uh, let me show you the best thing about this thing. When you're done and you have leftover coolant, you can just take this little plug here, plug it in real good, and then you can work this off. And no coolant spills, and you can transfer this to your reservoir or to your uh, coolant bottle. And let's see here. You take this over here, I'll try and do it so where you guys can see it, and you can undo this here, if I can do it without making a big mess here. I think I got it in there just a little too tight, but I'm going to try this here. Of course, I got it everywhere, but don't get it in there that tight, and you might be able to do this without getting your car completely soaked in coolant. Uh, it is a splash-free coolant. 
uh, system. You can get them on Amazon for pretty cheap. I got this for like 15 bucks. I think they sell them at auto parts stores and things like that. So just don't put that thing in there as deep as I did, as tight. And then you'll be able to do that without spilling coolant literally everywhere. So guess who's going to the car wash? Anyways, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tips and trick video. And uh, yeah, leave any uh, comments or questions below.